introduce you our participants at the round table. So, uh, Julie Keane, where are you from? Hello. North Carolina, Chapel North Hill. Hill. Yeah. Okay. From Participate. From Participate, okay. Yeah. And Don Present. If nobody knows Don Present. Uh, <laughs> also he known, needs no introduction. Also known as Mike. <laughs> Mike. Micro. Micro. Mike. Uh, so, the... Uh, and I'm Philippe from uh, Reconet, Secretary General from the Association. The idea of this roundtable is to discuss around uh, the actions we have taken in our sphere of influence, our territory, uh, on promoting open recognition principles. And uh, it's a, a discussion we will have. We didn't prepare really, but it's the idea of, okay, how can we work together, what uh, are the what is at stake in your uh, uh, territory. It's perhaps different than in France, so we exchange. Uh, and uh, I will um, start with uh, presenting what we have been doing uh, in the last year with Reconnaître. Uh, very briefly, because you, uh, the, there has been presentation already on what we've done, but it's a kind of summary. Uh, okay. So Reconnaître, you know, it's a specific French uh, approach, working on uh, a territorial approach, territoire, learning territory. Uh, it was on uh, Wednesday, we had some presentation of what we do, and it's something that really works uh, well. Uh, this territorial approach where different actors from different sectors can discuss around recognition, and we can work together for uh, employability, insertion, uh, development, etc. Reconnaître is uh, one of our successes, is the involvement, involvement of uh, public authorities, regional authorities. They work now with us, especially in, in Normandy. There was also a presentation Wednesday from the Conseil Régional de, de Normandie, who uh, launches its uh, program called La Normandie Badge les Compétences. So it's a real success because they understood how to work with us. Because at first, they, uh, when they discovered the open badges, uh, they said, oh, okay, we like it, we are going to make the open badges, and we are going to be the issuer. But then we talked together, the collective, Badjoin Normandie and Region Normandie, we said, no, it's not like this, it works. Okay? We have to work together, and we build uh, an ecosystem of recognition and trust. And they understood it really good, and said, okay, we are going to work with you, and we are going to recognize you, recognize your badges and we're going to create we, uh, meta badges, or key badges. So, it's a very good start and important uh, success that in France we can work with regional authorities because they fund also, they decide uh, the, the politics, uh, education, training, politics, etc. Uh, also, we contributed to a report on refounding uh, VAE, uh, recognition of prior learning in France st exists now for 20 years, but it doesn't work really good because it's still, you have to uh, fit into a, a frame from diplo existing diplomas, and then we check if you, uh, uh, you can have it. So um, with search, uh, we uh, did a nice uh, job uh, because we could uh, we put uh, the, some open recognition principles in the report. And the idea is that VAE uh, is not a one-time process, but we have to think it as a continuum between recognition, validation, recognition, validation. And not only as it is in France, once in a lifetime, you want to be recognized and have a diploma. That's the big idea. It's in the report, but it doesn't mean that REVA, REVA is a public startup. We have these kind of things. It's funded by the state. It's in the startup style to uh, implement some innovations and test and stop and go. Stop and go. But uh, it didn't uh, start really as we wanted, this REVA uh, experimentation. So we are now a little out of it because one of our key points was to take uh, into account the informal recognition that you can have from community of practice, etc. 
so just to say that at the highest level we could have some influence but still there's a lot of work to do uh, next topic and then we will exchange on every topic and you can tell us how this works in your on your territory uh, yesterday there was uh, an announcement that uh, we're going to launch uh, a nationwide stakeholder committee so to summarize it's the idea that we have now a lot of projects uh, in the regions but we have to uh, uh, to pass uh, to uh, scale up okay to scale up and so we we need to talk together at the national level it doesn't mean that we are going to create badges top down badges uh, a framework of badges no it's just to talk on on uh, educational policies on uh, technology together that's the idea it's just a beginning uh, have you heard that the first MOOC around open re on open recognition has been launched uh, last year Serge it was in November 2021 so only French speaking uh, we did it with Réseau Canopé so we uh, it's the first MOOC I think uh, on open recognition it has a it had a limited success can we say that about thousand uh, participants but it's not bad for uh, a MOOC on, uh, on, on open recognition yes so uh, it was on the fun platform in France it's a well-known MOOC platform and uh, we uh, think about doing the the next version and perhaps why not in English also or perhaps work together and create a MOOC. Yes. So Eden says that uh, now uh, on, on this platform there are open badges available for uh, the uh, and moderators of uh, the MOOCs. So it's uh, something really new, not only badges that come at the end, you get uh, something to attest your participation, but you can use them in the MOOC. So it's interesting. Uh, Reconnaître is also open educational resources. Uh, we made some training modules, uh, Open Badge 101, 102, and uh, how to use open badges in a, in a CV, Curriculum Vitae. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, with these uh, resources, when people share their badges, you can see how many uh, people had uh, this badge. And it's a badge you can claim after the, at the end of the, the, the training module. It's an easy one. It's just, I know how to use open badge. Simply, I can create my passport. I can share. I can ask for an endorsement. Okay, and at the end, I can uh, choose to display this um, this badge and make myself visible so it's a, a good impact uh, indicator for us because this is a free open uh, resource so we can see uh, in, in real time that uh, there are about two more two thousand beneficiaries and they can also geolocate themselves if they want so we can see on a map a heat map uh, almost of uh, our, our impact just thanks to uh, free resources, open resources, I mean, and uh, displaying the badge. And there's also another one, actor, actress of uh, the com community, open badge. It's a more powerful badge because you say, okay, I'm in, I'm with you guys, and I show it. So it's also a good tool to know, to identify the community. It's because we are perhaps going to discuss how to use open badges for developing or uh, open recognition. So, you are pioneers, you remember Badge the Planet. BadgeThePlanet.org doesn't work anymore today. Badge the World, sorry, Badge the World, yes. It was a, a really nice initiative, but when we were looking uh, to, to, to um, make it, uh, to use it again, it was not possible. So, with uh, Reconnaître, we said, okay, uh, what can we do? We, we tried to, to buy back the, the domain name, but we couldn't. So we uh, chose a new domain name, uh, badgetheplanet.org. And we have, uh, I encourage you, every one of you, if you are issuing badges, 
to uh, make yourself visible on the map. It's really simple, straightforward, and it's a, a tool to, to, to make visible all the Open Badges projects. We made it simple, we didn't ask uh, if, if your Open Badges are uh, related to Open Recognition, just Open Badges at first, so we can... Um, voila, I'm almost at the end. And tools to support the community. Uh, we have, just like you, participate uh, for the French-speaking community, uh, a, a light uh, or, um, social network. It's HumHub, it's a German uh, coding, so it's quality, and uh, open source, of course. <laughs> and it's a good way to uh, bring together, just like you do, uh, com the community. So we have for now uh, 500 members, people are interested, and so we can share really simply uh, news. And we have also spaces for our regional uh, territories, projects. Badjon la Normandie, Badjon les Pays de la Loire, les Hauts de France. Uh, so it's a good way because you know how important it is to communicate on what we're doing. And another here on the right, these are results of uh, some tools that we built. There is a workshop uh, on an image generator and a language for image uh, of, for open badges images with symbols, etc. If you want to learn more, it's a matrix. That's also open source. Uh, I'm coming at the end. And another way to promote open recognition principles, of course, are the Erasmus Plus projects funded by European Commission. Uh, repair, reveal, bridges. It's a good way to, voilà, to promote uh, open badges, open recognition, to test and uh, to work together with other countries, uh, other cultures. So, my dear friends, this it's a summary of what our, our successes in uh, in France. So it's uh, going very good um, onwards. How about you and your territory, our sphere of influence? Oh, well, we don't have a slide deck. <laughs> no, no problem. It's just going to be our words. Yes, that's because... all right. <laughs> all right, you go, Don. Um, so I was having some thoughts about this. Uh, there are a number of threads happening and a number of threads happening in uh, discussions at the coffee breaks. Um, so uh, speaking personally, um, I think events are good. Um, I think uh, publishing is good. Publishing things like frameworks, like the BORD, uh, things like that. I think that's really good. Um, I think we can learn a lot from you about policy, influencing policy. Um, I think that's something that we could do a better job of on the other side of the pond. Um, and um, I guess it's finding ways to link up effectively and cross-fertilize effectively uh, so we get more synergy rather than these things that come up and uh, come up and go down. Yeah, I would say in the last year, so participate similar to the platform that um, Philippe showed, we have these open communities. Doug talked about that yesterday with Keep Badges Weird. So there are two kind of open working groups that I do think it would be great to do more of a cadence. Um, so if there are open community calls on this side, if we could come and then um, to have you come present. So the Keep Badging Weird has community calls. We are co-building a badge wiki that everyone is welcome to do. And uh, the Open Skills Network is an interesting case because this was actually, the open recognition group was really prompted by Serge and by Nate and by Don and Justin. So there were five of us who put in the proposal. And the reason that we did Open Skills Network is we was for visibility. So the OSN is funded and you've been seeing this everywhere, by Walmart. So they have become a huge player now in, well, they've always been a huge player, but now in funding and philanthropy around workforce development. So um, I think it's credential as you go, we're showing what is happening at the, in the workforce and the labor market in the US, um, the feeling that higher ed is kind of collapsing. Um, and it is collapsing because of cost. 
and it is collapsing because it's not serving now what are now called the new majority learners. So the idea that these pipelines from high school to college, those are dwindling numbers. So if you look at enrollment around the country in the US, those are dwindling. What is happening now is people are lifelong learners. So there's more of an appetite for digital credentials. And so the idea was, all right, let's bring the open recognition pirates into the OSN because again, the OSN was gonna be very top down, which was how do we like link employers to higher ed? How do we change the curriculum to make sure that the curriculum serves the labor market? And we wanted to push open recognition because you could see right away that there was gonna be yet again another system of exclusion. So they were using the words of equity and diversity, but that is not what they were designing. So I felt we have been kind of at this for 18 months to try to have some impact on the OSN's thinking about how you actually open up these systems to walk the walk, that if you are gonna say these things that you wanna open up to everyone, that you are actually building systems to do that. So the OSN is still, I think, a fairly good convener. There's a thousand organizations that include employers, higher ed, organizations, some informal, and also policy actors. And the problem in the US is that it's so fragmented. Um, so there is certainly federal policy that I think we can start to inform. And Jobs for the Future is another organization that participates involved with. 40 organizations are doing this plug fest. Now I can't talk about that without laughing. Um, <laughs> And the idea is to do these experiments around um, credentials into digital wallets. Um, so the US is definitely sort of putting in its, I don't know, they're, they're sort of going in with this experimentation that once you get these things kind of on people's phones and these credentials that there'll be more adoption. I mean, that's my simple way of saying it. So I guess the way, like just to sum up and then pass it back to Don is that we've been just trying to work these cadenced conversations to connect the dots across all these different communities. And now on Participate, we're sort of now become a community of communities. So there's 75 organizations that sort of represent now workforce, labor, st we work with three states, have communities in there. So I think within that universe, if we can sort of, again, do these convenings, I do think we can have some diverse conversations around how you impact policy. And I think, again, you've done more work, I think, than I've seen really elsewhere, um, certainly at the national level. I think um, as, I, as I hear this, and um, as you know, it's a lot of great work in North America, but a lot of it is uh, 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 led, a lot of it is influenced by my alter ego, Mike. Yeah, of right? course, yes. So the micro-credential is, is like just bubbled to the top. And I, you know, I, I, I guess uh, when I first heard that term, I thought, oh, yeah, sure, okay, micro-credential. And then I didn't realize all the baggage that was coming with it. Um, and how this has turned into. So I think there needs to be a way of distinguishing what we're talking about without making it too much other. <laughs> um, and, it, that, and I guess it relates to something else that I, I think we are a number of gra often grassroots um, um, efforts and it's somewhat, there's a lot of flashes of brilliance uh, and, but yet there's not like a sustained message, clear, simple, plain, that, that can go. And I, I, I feel the need of something like that that all of us can kind of get behind. So just to give you a quick example, even though it's about micro-credentials, TV Ontario did a great job early on bringing micro-credentials. They actually tried to call them micro-certifications for a while, but bringing it onto the radar. And they did it with events. So um, I, I ran one in BC and David Porter, the CEO at the time, thought, ooh, this is good. Actually, Nate was there. Um, and then um, we ran, uh, they, they now run them annually in Ontario. And it's just, again, the idea of the cadence, right? But then they published their principles and framework. Really simple, single page, just put it up there. And everybody said, oh, yeah, okay, I sort of get it now. And that became a bit of a beacon 
um, for that. And that's actually what Stella and I are trying to reproduce with, uh, for IDB in, in that region. So it's, it's, you just put it there and you, know, okay, it's, you work on it, you make sure it's clean, whatever. And then uh, the other thing they did in terms of policy was they are a public agency and they partnered, well, the, the uh, uh, ministry funded them to fund a number of um, pilots that weren't much money actually, they were like five and 10K a piece or something. Uh, but the requirement was you had to partner with industry to do them, as opposed to you know, just take the money and imagine what industry might want and put it out there. So those sort of the events, the simple message that's a, sort of the beacon and then this way of um, sort of starting the tap, priming the pump with, with policy and a few little dollars, I think it was really effective. I think inserting your, so, you know, I heard a rumor that someone might be on the advisory council for credential as you go. So I think sometimes it's these um, little Trojan horses in these organizations, like mentioning OSN. Um, but I think putting out our principles, because what was interesting is that when we kind of adapted or came up with, and they were adapted from the open recognition principles that you've had, um, that we've had here, um, they have not been formally sanctioned by the OSN. And it's been, I've gone to now seven steering committee meetings, and I'm like, are you gonna vote? Can this be sort of, will the Open Skills Network actually stake a claim on um, these open recognition principles? And they have not yet. So there's a part of me that just thinks we just do a North American Open Recognition Alliance, put out the, you know, take one more look at those principles and publish them. And I would say that Doug and, and Laura's group at We Are Open do a number of publishing and I think we can formalize those more in terms of trying to sort of create um, and craft the narrative of what open recognition is vis-a-vis -vis micro credentials, vis-a-vis -vis open badges and, and sort of, again, get those constellations um, more clear and agreed upon by all of us. Yes, and that's a, a, a key point also, is to, to formalize things. And also, uh, we identified in France who needs help from a research uh, se sector, because we experiment a lot of things in, in projects, etc. But we don't have the time and the expertise, you know, to, to document it in a research way. That's, a, that's actually a great thing. So um, there was the session uh, on the research of Reconnaître that was led uh, yeah, by um, uh, Sebastian, Sebastian Beauvais. Um, and I was asking him at the time, that sounds great, is there going to be an English one? He says, not at this time. But I mean, that's an opportunity. That's, a, that, that's an opportunity to fill. And it's interesting because Simone was just talking about um, Dublin City University that's done some research on um, uh, micro-credentials, again, and so it's my alter ego, Mike, but one of the complaints of Mark Brown when he uh, has, you know, when he delivers webinars on the research, he's, he's about to publish this big omnibus um, paper. I think they're still waiting for approval from the European community to publish it, but one of the things he was saying, the findings were, it's all academic. It's all academics because I guess they're the ones who are paid to publish, paid, paid to research and publish. So that may be uh, an opportunity for us if we can, uh, yeah, get a, get a body of research to follow that up. Maybe using people over in the US like JFF or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see where they're, you know, how they're gonna come out of all of these sort of sprints they're doing around credentialing. Um, and again, because the Walmart found, I mean, this would be actually a, such as something perfect for them to fund because <laughs> they're now sitting on top of credential as you go, the plug fest, you know, there's like 35 different projects that are being funded. So I think it would probably, so we can start to work on that, which is advocating for them to fund research um, over the next year. So we can certainly work on that because, yeah. Well, Simone, do you have anything to add uh, oh, yeah. to this or did I steal your thunder? <laughs> No, it, this is just about collectively thinking about how we just produce research or curate the research that is out there and become the convener of this new way of looking at credentials in the open recognition sense of it. Um, this year here, I found that credential as you go may be an interesting uh, Trojan horse 
to get to Walmart and to, to break into uh, the established credentialing conversation, which is very much formal, it's very much non-open recognition. But credentialing is to go, I mean, it felt like, yeah, I mean, that is, if we can infiltrate that, we could probably get to Walmart and have some of the other stakeholders in the US back this up. I, someone that comes to mind is the Learning Economy Foundation. I mean, Bad Summit, NOAA, and, and everyone that is already there. I think that Walmart has been just carpet funding, you know, like everything. But they do it from the workforce development standpoint. And there's still this assumption, right, that you need to have formal credentials, that verifiability is uh, um, more uh, worth than trust. You know, sometimes I say, you know, uh, trust begins where verification ends, and I think that is very much true in the way we think about that. But to get some of the, the resources, uh, maybe credentials ago is one way. The other is, okay, we need to do publish more research that is not academic. Um, as Don saying, Mark Brown has been sitting on this uh, observatory of micro credentials. It's it's just a, a list of all the research that has been. It's an observatory that just lists all the research that has happened so far. And he's very willing to say, hey, let's push this out of WCT University and into a different steward. <clears throat> One idea uh, originally was this other sort of informal thing that we call Microcredential Science Frontier, which was something that Beverly Oliver and myself and Lena Patterson formerly at the campus of Ontario, started. That thing stalled, and so one question that I have is, you know, can we do something with that? Maybe, you know, once the jury is out <laughs> on the micro-credentials versus badges, we could use that to, you know, we can post that out, we can, I think that is an interesting, you know, way to show up to this conversation with a different uh, accent. Like, how do we think about this, you know, dialogue between micro-credentials and badges, and that could help restart is, you know, whatever was there, which in this case is just a, you know, a LinkedIn page and a website that has, had produced some content, but, you know, it feels like those are threads that we can connect going further. I mean, a couple of them. So credential as you go, you know, the, the observatory on micro-credentials, this micro-credentials on frontier, I mean, just to name a few, I mean, how, how do we coordinate this? I think it's the coordination of these resources that is important. Okay, as you walk the mic over to our wonderful friend Denise, I'm going to let Denise ask this question, and then I have some answer. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what I'm finding is that if we move out of this academic frame into something which is more akin to knowledge exchange, what knowledge exchange is it brings the stakeholder groups together, and CLOCK's just been funded almost 200,000 by the Greater London Authority to run an industry-led boot camp with CLOCK accreditation. And the reason they are doing that is um, we are outside of their remit. They're normally further education colleges that run these programs. There is an appetite to take it out of what is being perceived as a dusty old model that talks an inside conversation with itself. And what we could do with the badge conversation is to take it to local authorities, to take it to industry who are train, training a workforce from the beginning at industry entry level and to be able to engage in where the value is really held. And the, the case study um, around the stakeholder in the hydro bid project um, is a great model for engaging people in a process like this where everyone gets a badge as a stakeholder. So whether you're a local authority, whether you're an industry um, or, or a company, whether you're a funder, whether you're an academic institution, this is a space to explore what does real knowledge exchange look like and this is a great opportunity for badging knowledge exchange, which is really stuck as an alternative to research publication in a higher education framing. So there's a massive opportunity for international work in this area um, and having the stakeholders from those different uh, populations is we could really extract where the real value is. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I did want to sort of, we had kind of a homework assignment that Don actually said during Corey's talk, Corey Doctorow's talk, which is you all invited Corey Doctorow here <laughs> to talk. And what he talked about was the hijacking of many of our communities by giant monopolies that extract knowledge, extract wealth, and yeah, they're just, it's predatory, right? So how is that connected now then to building open recognition systems to kind of subvert that and to kind of build more community-based um, networks, right? Because that is always the problem. I totally agree. Once you get into these conversations about how you impact policy, then this all gets back to top down and we're just trying to convince these powerful players who we want to, <laughs> who are not, who are really not interested, I don't think, in equity or in inclusion. They're not. They're not. They're, they're not interested in power sharing, right. So like, you know, I think when I'm looking at your examples, these were community led and community run. So it'd be great to advocate for that and to create, even with alongside research, where are these use cases we talked about Crystal Rawls in, in Santa Domingo Hills. This is a Cal State project. And I think getting those use cases out there to really show to model what that looks like, what that kind of knowledge exchange can look like. Uh, yes, um, for example, uh, we are also uh, working on both sides. So we're working on the local projects and also at the policy level. But I think where it works, you're right, it's with the local projects, territorial projects where you can do things. Because in the Reva startup, for example, on refounding VAE, we can really do anything. Because when you're at this level, everything is blocked by poly politics, you know? Oh, you want to change that? No, you, uh, I don't want you to change that. So we couldn't do anything. So we, we, we came back to uh, original ideas to work with the regional council because it's more, uh, more open, it's, it's easier to do things. I hesitate to bring this in, but uh, the UNESCO Cities of Learning, is it's a vision. Um, is it a reality? My, my impression is it's pretty spotty. Um, there was something that was um, shared uh, that's linked to the cities of learning. I think it's, what is it, Brighton and, and Nottingham. Um, they were talking about that. They're using a particular badging platform to do it. But one of the things that really struck me was, a, I think it was particularly in Nottingham, there had been a really good job done linking together the local councils and um, you know community level organizations. So even harking back to, you know, Chicago City of Learning or Pittsburgh, you know, the, those early days that, you know, ended up collapsing into LRNG. Um, <laughs> uh, and I mean that. Yeah. yeah. One, I just want to say one thing is really learning from our past. Like, we cannot do Groundhog Day because you've had those examples. And so just we just need to, like, learn from them and, you know, do a little design cycle and just not make the same mistakes over and over again. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think well, what, what we can say about UNESCO cities uh, of learning, it is more like cities of training. And it's not cities as learning. So it's not about learning cities at all. It's not about uh, empowering the citizens. Uh, it's about being able to establish uh, learning uh, playlists. Uh, that, was, that was what Alarangi was about, creating playlists for, uh, of learning. But playlists of learning is not about building a learning territory, a learning city, a learning region. So uh, I think uh, this is uh, where yes, Un is UNESCO is, is totally uh, passé uh, from uh, this uh, <laughs> idea. But I, I totally support uh, uh, Denis' propo uh, proposal. I think we need to to, uh, to 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 work along this way, and we can create a coordination committee. So working along your ideas, and you need uh, we need new blood. Okay, so <laughs> even if you new even if the new blood come from the sixty plus, uh, it's fine. Okay? Right. <laughs> because 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 in fact we are, we are more free. Okay, we. Uh, 
uh, to, to do things. But you know, th there is one research question I, I would like really to uh, explore, is why has it taken so long to associate recognition and open? Even in the field of education, we have open educational resources. We have, uh, but these people, we speak about open education, how ready are they for open recognition? I think very, very few of them uh, at this stage. They are open, but uh, not, uh, not, not fully open. So I think a proper research, qu research question is, why has it taken so long? Why so few people in the open education are about uh, supporting open recognition? And also think about, th th uh, think about uh, the Open University of the UK. Um. When they created the Open University, there was this great thing which was about open diploma. And in fact, most of the graduates from the European University chose to have an open diploma. So they were creating their own curriculum. So when you think about the last publication from uh, the European Commission about uh, micro-credentials for higher education, you don't find any reference to open diploma or to open certificate or anything. It's about closed things. And there is one time, one occurrence of the word open, it is about open data. But it's not about open recognition. It's, it's not about uh, really open education. Uh, and, uh, and so I think proper research question is why so few people in the open world, not even, I don't mention the others, are supporting the idea of open recognition? I could give a long answer to that question, but I'm not going to. What I want to say is the agenda that I think is going to be one that is leading in the future is place making. And I think place making brings everybody together under an umbrella. It also serves the green economy. And if I don't need to go somewhere else to get exactly what I need from my neighborhood, I'm not going. And how we get a stake. So this stake system through badging of engaging everyone in a district and neighborhood with a badge to feel part of that community. That's been a problem that now is really coming into focus because of the planet and how we're destroying it. Um, there will always be in any context, the privileged who will not power share. So I think in a way, if we focus energy on finding out why, uh, to be blunt, we're wasting our time and energy and where we need to focus is where creativity and collaboration come together around a, how do we live in a quality place? How does everyone live in a quality place? And how is that place open for communities to engage and thrive and progress in areas they want to? I agree. Frederic, we have four or five minutes left. Yeah, I talk a bit about with uh, Simone, but can, uh, you, you, you were saying that you can talk about uh, a bit more about Plugfest. Fest. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Okay, so uh, Jobs for the Future is an, I guess, an NGO. It's the best way to explain it. Um, they've been around for a while. They work closely with the government, with the Department of Labor in the U.S., um, but got this Walmart funding and ran the first, basically it's a sprint, the first plug fest for digital wallets around three protocols. And Simone is also on the you're, aren't you on the, like, the governing committee? <laughs> so I'm wondering if I should pass the mic to you. I'm one of the participants, but um, here, I'm going to hand it to you so you can describe what it is. Because mostly, if you can talk about the first one and then the second one, Simone, because we're only involved, we've, we're involved as an issuer, as a credential issuer on this second sprint, which is happening right now. Um, but I'll let Simone kind of give more broader context. I, I wonder if this is also the best use of the, our last five minutes. So I'm happy to have another Oh, that's chat. true. That's a good point. Because I think right now the plug fest and this community are two separate things. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's, okay. that is, is that okay? really. Actually, it, it would be interesting though to pick up on the idea of JFF because JFF chase funding, okay? 
So, yeah. uh, and it, they were a potential partner if we can intrigue them in the notion of open recognition, why, et cetera. They may, they may be a, a bit of a funding magnet that, c that can help on that side of the water and help yeah. us get the message out. And the more that you were talking also, we have a couple of partners, mostly with Education Design Lab, who are working um, with rural community colleges in the US. And those rural community colleges are really trying to save those communities and really mostly keep people there. So there's just been this massive kind of human drain from those communities. So there are a lot of models of them serving as kind of empowerment, like basically economic empowerment zones. But I think it's much more of a community run as they're trying to kind of get students in the door but also kind of reshape what the rural community college does in those communities, so, yep. And I hesitate to say it because it sounds like Mike, but I, I do think a coordinated communication strategy that we can all get behind that would be designed by a professional, but that we can all use our individual brilliance in ways that have a sort of a central spine and a clear, a clear message would really, really help. Okay. Merci. Thank, Thank you, you all. It was not a discussion, so we will continue this uh, discussion further on. Thank you for being there so early in the morning.